Hello, so in this video we'll be going through the Anaconda Python installation that we'll use in our analytics courses. Note that we primarily use Python 3.6, but as part of this installation we'll demonstrate how we can also do a side-by-side -side installation of Python 2.7 using Conda environments in case you have need for that, and we might actually use that some in the course, but we'll focus primarily on, on 3.6. Note also that I'm not an expert in this. Uh, I can and will be wrong somewhere along the way, and I'm also relatively new to Anaconda. I basically started using it for this class. So please let me know if you find errors or interesting shortcuts or if you have recommendations for us to, um, uh, to use in the future. Also note that there's a video in this series uh, on installing software on your computer. So if you're not familiar with the process or if you're uh, skittish about installing software, I recommend you watch that video. It's only about six minutes long, so hopefully you'll find it useful. So let's get started. And what we're going to do first is install the base installation that we're going to use. And so we, as I mentioned, are going to use the Anaconda distribution for the class. There are other options you can use also. You can manually uh, create a package uh, structure if you want. Uh, it's a little bit more work, but you can customize it to your particular needs. Again, for this class, the Anaconda um, distribution provides everything we need. It's a bit easier to use. So you can go to the website if you want information about on Anaconda in general. Uh, you can see uh, there's uh, plenty of information about. Our interest is in downloading the software, at least for what we're going to demonstrate in this video. So if you go to the Anaconda distribution and then pick, we're going to use Windows for the class, and then you can download, uh, in this case, the 3.6 version. Make sure for the class that you download the 3.6 version. You can see here that I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to cancel out of that. And then just, uh, if you were actually doing this, you would uh, wait for the download to occur. Uh, and then you go to the download directory and start the software. And so we'll start up the installation here uh, and sort of walk through uh, some of the basic options that we have. So we're going to click next to the continue, agree to the license agreement. And here's a fundamental question that we have here. And let me go back to my slides here. Uh, that's download, already did that. This first question you have to think about is whether you want to install for our users or your account only. And you can see that it asked me that here, just, just for me, which is the recommended approach, or for all users. And if you install for all, choose for all users, then obviously all of the users of your computer will have access to it. But it also requires you to have administrative privileges on the computer, and you might need to adjust the permissions of the installation directory in order to do that. And so we're just going to start using the uh, just me installation. So I'm going to click next here. And then it says, okay, where do you want to install this? And so this is the installation directory. Feel free to change that if that's not where you want to um, install it. And then we'll click uh, uh, next. And the second and last question that we need to talk about is this notion of should we add Anaconda to the path environment variable? First of all, if you don't know what that means, then you can just take the default recommended value. Adding it, to the, adding it to the environment path will let you run Python from any default command prompt without typing in the path. Sometimes that uh, people like to do that uh, when you're writing, running uh, Python scripts and so on. Uh, Python, uh, Anaconda recommends against that because it causes some issues uh, with some of their packages and there's some custom um, uh, custom updating and custom configuration that's required. So unless you have a particular reason to do that, I recommend that you not do that, that you not check this box. Uh, and uh, that's in fact what I'm going to do for uh, my installation. And then finally register Anaconda as my default Python 3.6. That's something that we want to do. And so we click the install and away we go. So I'm going to stop the video here uh, and then I will come back when we get a little bit further down the road. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, we've completed the installation. On my computer, it took a little while. Uh, Anaconda installs a lot of packages, but that's what makes it flexible uh, for our use, so you don't have to install these uh, manually, but it does take a little while. So let's go ahead and go to Next, and we're going to skip. I'm going to skip if you want to use, if you're used to using Visual Studio, you can use that uh, tool. I'm going to skip that, and I'm also going to check these, uncheck these two. I don't care to see more about the Anaconda cloud and so on. So here we are. We have the 
package uh, installed. And so next on our list is, well, how do we use this? And so there are a couple of different ways to that I can use um, uh, Start Anaconda. Let me get out of my slides here and close all this stuff. Let's close that. You don't need to see me again. Okay, back to the slide set. And so in terms of options for starting Anaconda, uh, first of all, there's the start menu. So you can just hit the Windows key, scroll down a little bit, and you can now see, you should see an Anaconda uh, folder. And if you just click, you see some options here. If you just take uh, the Anaconda prompt, it will bring up uh, the Anaconda prompt. And so you can see Anaconda here base here. This is the environment which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, the other way or another way is to just use the Windows key and search which is the way I usually work. So it's just A and A and then it eventually finds it. We'll talk about Navigator here in just a second and you can uh, pull it up here. Uh, and so you can either uh, traverse through the menu or search. Uh, once you have it up you can have a quick launch uh, shortcut if you want. So you just right click here and pin to taskbar and now when I exit it's uh, well you can't see my taskbar now but you can see it right there. There you go. And now it's uh, the uh, anaconda prompt is directly there. So uh, I have that shortcut. Uh, and then finally you have navigator. Uh, I originally didn't have navigator on here because I've never actually used navigator. I actually learned it when I was setting up this video. But if you click on the Anaconda Navigator, it'll bring up uh, a graphical user interface that gives you access to uh, all of the Anaconda tools that were just installed. So it uh, takes a little bit to come up, but let's uh, wait here just a second and see if it's gonna see if it's eventually gonna come up. As I said, I haven't used this. I've seen it once or twice, but I haven't used it myself. So. I'll have to leave that for you. And there we go. So you can see the initialization. I'm just trying to see all of the things that are added. And so I think, I believe that if you have this set up, it will customize itself to your environment. And so here it is. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, yeah, I'd like to give him feedback. Let's see here. Maybe it's going to come up. Oh, there it is. And so you can see Anaconda Navigator. And so here's a IPython, which we'll talk about here in just a second and Jupyter Lab, which again we'll talk about that here in just a second. So it provides you an interface to uh, their uh, to their packages. So let's see, I want to quit Navigator. And so again, the key is, is, is understanding how, what your options are. Now that we have a quick launch shortcut, that's probably what I'm going to use uh, most often. And certainly when I'm in class, uh, this is what I'm going to use um, more often than Okay, so now what I want to do is just really quickly go through a couple of initial commands to try now that we have um, um, uh, we have Anaconda set up. So I'm just going to open the Anaconda uh, prompt that I had before and we're just going to go through the commands that I have listed here in order. So Python version and so that'll tell you the currently running version of Python, so 3.6.4. You can see if we open the Python prompt uh, the interactive mode as usual, just type Python and there's our three carrots uh, that is, is normal. So I can import numpy as np. And so you can see that uh, the, these packages that we're using are part of the standard Anaconda install. And if you had installed the base Python and wanted to add packages manually, you'd have to install all of these. So we can import scipy as sp, import mat plot, live, and so you can see all of these things are built in or pre-installed as part of the uh, Anaconda package. So we're going to talk about all of those during the class. Right now we just wanted to make sure that uh, we understood how they, that they actually did get installed. The next thing on the list is IPython. Again, if you're not familiar, don't worry about it. It's just, uh, this is an interactive Python shell, so a little bit more advanced than the standard Python shell. We'll talk about this a little bit. I don't use this too much because we've kind of moved to using the next thing we're going to look at. So let me get out of here. Quit. It's there. Key here again is showing that it's there. The last one we're going to look at is Jupyter Notebook. So just type Jupyter Notebook. Again, don't worry if you've not been exposed to this and you don't know what it is. The key is that it gets installed for you. A whole bunch of stuff happening and you can see that what uh, um, Anaconda is doing is bringing up the Jupyter interface. 
this is the primary interface that we're going to use for accessing uh, Python and uh, some of the R tools that we use in the semester also uh, in a uh, web-based uh, interface so let me stop that and this is the uh, the uh, Jupyter backend to get out of this you can just hit control C three times in a row so it's just control C control C control C and it will kick us back out to where we have our uh, base install and so that's sort of just a quick okay we have anaconda installed let's just check out some of the features we haven't note that we haven't done anything yet other than verify that that, that things are getting how things were appropriately installed Okay, so next on our list is to talk a little bit about the Conda Package Manager. You can see I have a, a link to the documentation if you want to see it. Essentially what the Package Manager does is let you manage the installation of various packages associated with Anaconda. So when we tried NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib, these are all packages that are associated with Python and they were installed for us automatically. We can use the Conda Package Manager to update packages or to add new packages, delete packages, and so on. In particular, the one package that we are going to use, or one of the packages we're going to use in this class that, are, that is not part of the standard Anaconda install, is the MySQL Python connector. So you can install that using the Conda Package Manager simply by issuing this command, conda install mysql-connector-python from an Anaconda prompt. So let me grab one of those. So here we are. Here's the Anaconda prompt that we had before. And I'm simply going to say conda install mysql connector python and if I typed it all correctly you're going to see it's uh, solving the environment so it's going to check and see whether this package is already installed and if not how does it find it note that you need to be connected to the internet to make this happen I also got this message saying I need to update conda which you should do at your convenience so just conda update dash in base conda will update the conda package comes up and tells me when you're using the package manager okay I found it is this what you want yes or no and I'm just gonna hit enter for yes downloads it again you have to have an internet connection and you can see that it is now part of the um, uh, part of my anaconda package so if okay sorry about that little mistake I had to restart so we had just installed the MySQL package and so start Python interpreter and I'm going to import MySQL and so you can see that it successfully imported the MySQL package again if you're not familiar with what I'm doing don't worry about it we're gonna go over it in class this is just for the people who already know Python you can see otherwise you should just type as I have it instructed here and uh, observe what happens okay and so that conda package uh, manager will let you install other packages and uh, we will do that undoubtedly through the semester if there are packages that you already know you want to use uh, feel free to go go ahead and install those in your um, uh, in your distribution the last thing that we're going to cover in this video is so-called environments that are supported uh, by conda and so there's a guide or the um, documentation which will describe exactly what an environment is and how it works and how to do the management of the uh, environment so what we're going to do right now though I'm just going to take a quick look at this and you can go back and look at your convenience uh, for more details but the goal for our class as I said we're going to focus primarily on Python 3.6 but I wanted to demonstrate how to install Python 2.7 so that you can run in a side-by-side -side environment in case there are things that you already have in Python 2.7 or uh, something you want to experiment with and so what we're going to do is I'm going to just grab an anaconda prompt here I guess I don't have one open so let's just open open one there's my shortcut and just go through some of these commands here so we'll do conda environment env list and this lists the currently installed um, uh, environments and so since we just installed anaconda uh, we only have the base environment and so right here you can see the word base this is the name of our environment and that's what the base represents right here and so this prompt tells me that I'm in the base environment so in order to create a Python 2.7 environment we need to issue the following conda commands we're just going to do conda create dash in py 2.7 Python equal 
and note that this py27 is just a name that I chose. So this is going to create a new environment. In addition to base, I will now have py27, and it's going to install Python in that environment, version 2.7 from Anaconda. And so if I then hit enter, assuming I typed it correctly, again, it's going to go look a bit in the environment. Uh, hopefully uh, it's going to find it or find that I don't have it and I typed everything correctly. Let's give it a second here. Okay, so I actually stopped the video. For those of you uh, following along on your computer, you will note that this actually took a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, and so it, it went through and said, okay, well, if you want to install Python 2.7 with the standard Anaconda, these are all the things that are going to be installed. So you can see these are all the packages that were actually installed when we did the initial base installation. Environments are separate. So we have a 3.6 with all of these packages and now we're going to end up with a 2.7. Ask me if I want to proceed. I will say yes. And at this point again, I'll stop the video because it's going to take a little while to complete the installation. Okay, so we're back and you can see that we finished up here. For those of you Python users, you can scroll back through and see some of the standard libraries, uh, NumPy, uh, JSON Schema, uh, let's see what other ones are we going to use here over the semester. There are a whole bunch of them. Uh, Matplotlib you can see there, uh, Tickle, Tickle TK, all of those things. So anyway, we'll use some of those over the semester. Again, no problem if you haven't seen those before. And now we have a new um, we have a new environment, and you can actually see the uh, instructions to activate, which I also have listed over here on the slide. So let's just go through this and let's just do the list first. Let's say conda env list. So whereas before we had the base, which we saw, and now we have our PY27 that we just created. So if I want to activate that, I can simply use the activate command. Activate PY27. And so now we have an Anaconda environment with PY27. And so now this is the environment that has Python version 2.7. And so I open up Python and you can see the 2.7 there. I can also do, oops, I meant to do Python version. There we go. One thing I want to point out when we open up the Python, I mentioned this before, but let's be clear here. Let's see, let me, I think I have it in the slide. Yeah, package installations are specific to environments. So if you want to use the MySQL connector, you have to install it. So if I were to go in my 2.7 and say import MySQL, it's going to say no such package. And so we have to go through, let's see that, um, install right here. I have to do the conda install uh, in the new environment if I want to um, uh, if I want to use it uh, from within this new environment. The other thing to keep in mind is we've activated 2.7. We want to use deactivate so that we can deactivate the environment. So we de deactivate and now we're back to the baseline environment. And so now we have uh, through the package we have two side-by-side -side installations. We have Python 3.6 and we have Python 2.7 and those environments can, you can set those up differently, you can add packages, uh, basically interact with those uh, completely independently. And so again what we did in this video is just go through the basic install. There is a lot more material available on the Anaconda website and on the Conda website for the package manager and for the install and so you can customize the install and all of that. What I went through in this video was really just the most simplistic follow all the defaults installation which in fact is what we're going to use uh, in the class this semester and next semester also.